With the group stage of the best competition of the summer being officially done, I figured what better time than to review everything that's happened so far. So Copa America started off on a really strong note as Argentina went up against Canada. Fun fact, this game meant that the northernmost country in the Americas was playing against the southernmost country in the Americas. No! Just a little bit of geography for you guys there. So you had, of course, the reigning World Cup champions, the reigning Copa America champions going up against an okay Canada side that's been kind of struggling, been in a little bit of a transitional period in recent times. So this game kind of went how you expected. Although during the first half, both teams were kind of feeling each other out. Argentina found their opener at the 49th minute. As a good ball in behind, ended up finding its way somehow to Julian Alvarez, who put it in the back of the net. After that, the Canadians did push back a little bit, but ultimately, Lautaro Martinez would come on as a super sub and kill off the game at the 88th minute really putting his demons of international football on in the past oh and i forgot to mention this but messi did miss some very clear sitters so uh fraud watch was definitely on messi this game the second game for this group will see peru go up against chile and what was to that point which was only the second game the most boring game of the tournament game would finish no no neither team really looked too convincing chile did have the lion's share of the possession they did have more shots in total but really neither team really looked too impressive but of course it ended up in a stalemate having just witnessed is the first match week of the Euros. This didn't really leave much of a good impression for the people who started watching the Copa after the Euros. So after the first games for Group A, we saw Argentina in first place, Chile and Peru tied for second, and then Canada in last. But not to worry boys, after a disappointing end to Group A, we had Group B, which had some pretty good games in the first week. We saw Ecuador versus Venezuela, which to everyone's surprise, Venezuela came out on top. So Ecuador, who have of course Moises Caicedo and Valencia up top, started off the game with a red card. They're doing his best De Jong impression at the 22nd minute, Ener Valencia would get a red card, leaving Ecuador a man behind for the entire game. And of course, Fox had to make this really clear for the American viewers that Ecuador was down to 10 men instead of just using a red card. I don't know, whatever. They would get a goal after the red card just before half time. However, with that man advantage, Venezuela, who have looked pretty good this tournament, ended up pulling two goals back, winning the game 2 1, and what was a pretty impressive game for them. Even though they had the man advantage, they did make the most out of their chances and they did deserve the win at the end of the day and then after this we had mexico versus jamaica in what was for lack of a better words another boring ass game i did make a video about mexico's first two games and if you want to watch that it's going to be right here for you guys but this was just four for mexico it was a team that we're pretty familiar with because we play jamaica all the time since they're already in concacaf but it was just boring no creativity lacking up top we found our goal after we started pushing a ton of number fours towards the end of the game but we ended up winning the game one no not the most convincing game for mexico but you know what we'll take the win meaning after the first couple of games, Group B stood as Venezuela in first place, Mexico in second place only due to the goal scored, Ecuador and Jamaica both tied for last place, again coming down to goal difference. Next we'll take our attention to Group C where the boys in red, white and blue would go up against Bolivia, you know the country that everyone knows for the high altitude and nothing else when it comes to football. So of course, all things considered, Greg Berhalter ball aside, this was a relatively comfortable win for the US. Christian Pulisic opened up the scoring at the third minute with a very very good goal, with Balogun finding the second for the U.S. at the 44th minute. Ultimately, this win was extremely comfortable for the U.S. It could have honestly been 4-5-0, but a couple of poor shots and a pretty good display from Bolivia's goalkeeper held the scoreline to just 2-0. And then to follow up the U.S., we had Uruguay going up against Panama. Uruguay for many is considered as one of the teams that probably go on to the final, if not finish in that top four category, or maybe even win the whole thing. So they honestly made pretty light work of Panama. Panama did put up a good fight for the majority of the game, but honestly, Uruguay was just way too much for them to handle. At the 15th minute, Maximiliano Araujo would put in a very, very beautiful goal. Honestly, one-upping Christian Pulisic's goal in the last game to put Uruguay up. After this, Uruguay was just entirely comfortable. Darwin Nunez would get his goal at the 85th minute, and Vina would find his goal at the 91st minute. Panama did get a consolation at the 94th, but all things considered, a dominant display from Uruguay, which is what a lot of people expected. Oh, and before I get away from this group, I do also have to mention the fact that Fox News' coverage of the United States and how they talk about their players can be pretty funny sometimes. It's a generational talent. It's like Maradona. And then Messi has just had that, that crown. But there's other players, Jude Bellingham, you know, Polo Six coming up. So with the first couple of games out the way for Group C, we had Uruguay in first place, the US in second place, only on goal difference. And then Panama and Bolivia taking up those third and fourth place spots, again, just on goal difference. So moving on to Group D, which is honestly a very big powerhouse group. First, we had a Colombia going up against Paraguay. At this point, Colombia was coming up on about 23 games unbeaten, and Paraguay was in no position 
mission to stop them. After knocking on the door non-stop for the first 30 minutes, Colombia would find their first goal at the 32nd. After a beautiful back post cross found Munoz wide open at the back post, Colombia would quickly find their second goal, really putting a nail on the fact that they were just going to be dominating this game. Paraguay did get their consolation goal a little bit earlier at the 70th minute, but still, even after this goal, it was pretty much just Colombia the whole time. These guys are on a mad one. They have the spirit of Pablo Escobar guiding them through this tournament and through international football at the moment. What they're producing on the pitch is absolutely crazy. Definitely the best team to watch in Copa America if you don't have allegiance to any other team. After this, we have the team that Ronaldinho just gave up on Brazil. So Brazil went up against Costa Rica, which is a CONCACAF team that many probably expected Brazil to beat. And to everyone's dismay, Brazil looked absolutely shocking against this team. They did have shots on target, but overall as a whole, this performance was terrible. The game ended up nil-nil. Costa Rican fans were taking the absolute make out of the Brazilian fans at the end of the game. This was just such a poor display from the entire Brazil team. It had people really justifying the fact that Ronaldinho said he was done with this Brazilian team. Vinny was nowhere to be found. Paqueta was nowhere to be found. Rodrigo was nowhere to be found. It was just terrible. So Brazil drew the game, which left a lot of question marks for this Brazilian side. But after these first two games, Colombia found themselves in first place, Brazil in second, Costa Rica in third, and then Paraguay in fourth. So for the second round of games for Group A, first we had Peru versus Canada, and what was again a pretty lackluster game overall. When I say Peru versus Canada, does that really bring you much excitement? I don't really think so, does it? The game was pretty boring up until the 59th minute where Peru would get a red card due to a terrible tackle from Araujo, which would leave Peru in a pretty bad position. After this, it was honestly easy pickings for Canada. They had a ton of counterattacks. They were able to capitalize on one of them, where Jonathan David would get his goal at the 74th minute. Overall, not the most convincing victory for Canada, but they managed to get the job done, which put them in a really good position going into the last game week. Jesse Marsh ball prevailed for once and it was crazy, but the Canada fans, you could say they deserved the win, but overall it was a pretty boring game. After this, we had Chile versus Argentina, which is a rematch of the 2016 and 2017 finals that had the entire world laughing at Messi until he spun the block with the Copa America and the World Cup. Ultimately, Argentina will come out on top after once again super sub of the tournament, Lautaro Martinez would find a goal at late into the game. Chile made it really tough for Argentina this game. They didn't really have much of a flow going into it. So after match day two, we had Argentina in first place, Canada in a surprising second, Peru third, and Chile last place. With the final game week, Canada was going to play against Chile. Argentina played against Peru, so it was looking grim for Peru. But Chile and Canada, the winner of that game, could progress. But obviously, we're going to have to wait and see what happens with that game. So for Group B this time around, we had Ecuador taking on Jamaica, and then Mexico taking on Venezuela. For Ecuador versus Jamaica, this was honestly a pretty comfortable game for Ecuador the entire time. I think the quality that they have is just too much for Jamaica. Jamaica has a ton of problems going on. Ecuador found their first goal from an own goal in the 13th minute. From their penalty just before halftime found them with the 2-0 lead. Jamaica did bring one back at the 54th minute through Michael Antonio, but Ecuador would just seal the game at the 91st minute, which again was just a pretty comfortable game for Ecuador the entire time. Jamaica in both games really struggled to create anything. They didn't really look that good and it really shows from the results, right? They lost to a very bad Mexican side and then a very talented Ecuador team just made light work of them. So for Jamaica, this was the end of the road and for Ecuador, this kept them alive in the group. And then after this, we had Venezuela versus Mexico, which again, I talked about in my most recent video, but this was just poor for Mexico. Side to side passing, backwards passing, zero creativity, not a single clinical bone in any of our forwards bodies when we would be attacking. Pretty much like watching any English game so far in the Euros, okay? We look absolutely terrible. Venezuela looked pretty good and they capitalized from very poor defending from Quinones at the 57th minute when they would win a penalty, slot it home, and from there, they pretty much defended and they didn't have to do much because Mexico just f***ing sucks. We suck. We can't do anything. So for Venezuela, this was the easiest 1-0 win ever. So after the second round of games, we had Venezuela in first place, Ecuador in second place, and Mexico in third, and then of course, Jamaica in last place, officially out of the tournament. So for Group C, the first match saw a game that was entirely dominated by the referee that was in charge of the game. So at the 18th minute, a very rash decision from Wea saw the US go one man down very early into the game. And honestly, this was to the US detriment. So as a whole, the US struggles to do anything creative going forward, pretty similar to other teams at the moment, Mexico, England, like I mentioned. But despite this, the US would find their opening goal at the 22nd minute through Balogun. So hopes were high, right? You had these players, you still have Pulisic, you still have Balogun, you still have Gio Reyna, you still have all this great talent on the field. You just got your first goal. Yes, you're a man down, but you can definitely push forward. And then Panama gets an equal. 
equalizer just a couple minutes later. After that goal from Panama, this game was entirely just pretty much Panama putting a pounding on the US. Pretty similar to England, after the US got their goal, they pretty much just cowered down in their shell. And it was pretty easy for Panama to just keep going at the US. And they would eventually find the go ahead goal at the 83rd minute. However, after this, things kicked off very quickly and they would also find themselves with a red card. Meaning for the last handful of minutes, it was 10 men for both teams, which again, Fox had to really display for people in the US here because we have small brains. But ultimately, the game would go Panama's way in a slightly shocking result, right? Because everyone expected the US to pull through, get their win, hold up a good match against Uruguay. But instead, now they find themselves fighting for their life in the final game week. And then in the second game, not much to talk about there. But what I will say is Uruguay look absolutely phenomenal. They absolutely slapped Bolivia 5-0. The last three, Nunez, Araujo, Valverde, and Bentecourt all getting on the score sheet. This was just more brilliance from Uruguay. Honestly, outside of Colombia, this is another team that's extremely fun to watch. If you don't have a favorite for the tournament, keep a close eye on Uruguay. They could go all the way. They made very light work of this Bolivian team. So with the second match day for this group done, we have Uruguay sitting in first place, the US and Panama in second and third respectively, and then Bolivia sitting in fourth place, which means they are officially out of the tournament. So for Group D, first game, we have Colombia versus Costa Rica, which again, another brilliant performance from Colombia. They absolutely dominated Costa Rica. Luisia slotted home a very beautiful penalty. Davidson Sanchez and Cordoba would find themselves on the score sheet at the 59th and 62nd minute. And this was just a light work from Colombia. More beautiful play, more amazing attacking football. They deserve the win. They find themselves automatically qualified after winning their first two games. And honestly, they could also make a pretty deep run in the tournament. And then after this, you have Brazil, who again, right, they have to answer for their sins in the last game. They have a lot to prove. And against Paraguay, I would say they did prove a point. So they would find their opening goal at the 35th minute through Vinicius Jr., who did silence a lot of the haters who were saying, he's not good enough to play on this team. He's not good enough to lead Brazil. Neymar was calling the guy ugly. He stepped up. He did his thing. And then just before halftime, Brazil would get another two quick goals, making it look very bleak for Paraguay as they would be going into halftime 3-0 down. Paraguay did start the second half pretty strong as they would get a goal at the 48th minute, but a penalty at the 65th minute would find Brazil on top 4-1. Pretty much much putting the nail in the coffin for the game. I will say Paraguay did have a little bit of a chance, especially before Brazil started going crazy. Paqueta did miss a penalty at the 31st minute and with Paraguay having a couple of good pop shots here and there, there was a little bit of belief. But once Brazil started running away with it, things just look rough. Another thing that I will say is this game, Paqueta did everything. He missed a penalty. He got a yellow. He got a goal. He got subbed off. He did everything. The guy, I'm sure, hit the craziest parlay. I'm sure he just tripled, doubled, quadrupled his millions so congrats to that guy so with the second round of games done for group d colombia sits in a comfortable first place brazil also sit pretty comfortably in second costa rica sit in third and then paraguay in fourth so for group a the last round of matches saw argentina go up against peru and argentina for this game rotated extremely heavily they pretty much had their entire b team out there lautaro martinez who at this point now is the top goal scorer in the tournament finally got his start and he definitely showed out he would get two goals for the albi celeste this match which just put a nail on this very easy win for them. So Argentina won the game 2-0, topped the group, perfect run. Garnacho had a little bit of a stinker, but we'll forgive him. But regardless, very easy win for Argentina here. The second game saw Canada against Chile. And like I mentioned, the winner of this game goes through. So you would imagine a lot of passion, a lot of attacking football, a lot of commitment. And we had another stinker, guys. We had another nil-nil. Canada looked very poor. Chile looked very poor. Chile would actually get a red card in this game as well. So of course, something you aren't seeing in the Euros that you are seeing here in Copa America, boys, is red card so if you want your entertainment come to copa america okay chile would actually not score a goal this entire tournament so very bad from them alexis sanchez is definitely washed but regardless this would essentially see canada through so after the final round of games argentina sit in first place like i said with nine points canada sit in second place with four chile in third place and then peru in fourth so to my surprise canada go through argentina top the group it's going to be very interesting to see how far canada can go all right so for the next group venezuela would go up against jamaica so it was the team that was pretty much confirmed to go through against a team that was pretty much confirmed to go home. And again, with Jamaica, you had just more terrible football. At this point, get Usain Bolt on the pitch for them. Get freaking Robbie from AFTV on the pitch for them. Anybody could help them at this point. They got absolutely pounded out by Venezuela. They did put up a good defensive fight up, up until after halftime. But honestly, Venezuela was just too good for these guys. They made light work of them in the second half. Venezuela topped the group with a perfect run, just like Argentina. And then the Mexico-Ecuador game. So again, a game where Mexico needed to win they had to win they could not draw obviously you can't lose ecuador all they had to do was get a draw not lose or win mexico or again
again, just more poor play. We did see some changes from Jimmy Lozano. So to his credit, I will say we finally, finally saw the benching of Antuna, which was good. Tino Huerta did a little bit better. He provided a little bit more. But honestly, I hope this is the wake up call for Mexico as the game would end up nil nil after a lot of pushing and pushing and pushing and not being able to score a goal in this game. Mexico find themselves eliminated and Ecuador are going through. I will make a separate video to talk about some of the performances from the CONCACAF teams. But for this group, the final standing sit as Venezuela with first place, Ecuador second, Mexico third, and Jamaica in fourth. Two CONCACAF teams, pack your bags, you're going home. Bonham Bowl is topping this group very comfortably. So for group C, everything was to play for in this final match day, at least for the US and for Panama. Uruguay had already secured themselves a ticket into the next round. They did still feel the full strength team, but also wanted to send the US a message. So for the US, the task for them was going to be as hard as possible. Panama was playing against Bolivia, so for them, it was going to be a lot easier to try and book that ticket into the next round. So for the US, if they lose this game, they're gone. If they draw against Uruguay, they would have to hope that Bolivia can do something against Panama. So what happened in these two games? So well, in the 22nd minute, Fajardo found himself in behind for Panama, putting them up 1-0. At this point in time, it was still 0-0 between the US and Uruguay, meaning the US was going to be out at this point in time. If we take a look at that match, honestly, the US was struggling greatly. They really couldn't get it behind. This match was incredibly chippy. There were so many fouls all over the place. Balogun had to get subbed out because he had gotten injured. This game was so cagey. It was crazy. It was like watching a UFC match, a WWE match live. It was crazy. Neither team could really get any momentum. So by halftime, the game was still nil-nil. The US had put in a good performance, but it was still looking very grim for them, especially going forward. So going into the second half, everyone's shock. Bolivia found a goal at the 69th minute, which gave a lot of hope to the US fans in Kansas City. The news spread around the stadium. Fans rejoiced. The US was back in the playoff picture for Copa America. But Uruguay decided, fuck all that. We're going to score a goal. We're going to do it our way. So shortly after Bolivia found their equalizer, Matias Oliveira capitalized on a loose ball off a free kick and placed it in the back of the net. So with this goal, Uruguay would go up 1-0. So regardless of what was going on in the other match, Panama was going through. However, let's take a quick look at this. Was this offside? To me, even as the biggest US national team hater, I think it was offside. VAR says otherwise. Uruguay get their goal. USA is losing. At the moment, USA is out. There's still a little bit of hope at this point in time. Maybe Bolivia can get something done, but no. Instead, at the 79th minute, Panama get their go-ahead goal, and then at the 90th minute, Panama get the final goal to make the game 3-1, securing their spot in the playoffs for Copa America. Meanwhile, the US is struggling to do anything against Uruguay. They can't create. No, Pulisic isn't doing anything. Girena isn't doing anything. Pepe isn't doing anything. McKenney isn't doing anything. The US go out so bad. Burhalter ball at its finest. Since the US packing, even though they're already in the US, everyone just go home. Thank you to Burhalter. I hope you stay as a US manager. The final standings in this group have Uruguay in first place, Panama in second, US in third, and Bolivia in fourth. Meaning that is it for the USA, the two CONCACAF Giants are gone. Finally, we have Group D, where we had one game that had a lot of weight to it and another that didn't really matter too much. So we'll start off with Costa Rica against Paraguay. So at this point, Paraguay is already eliminated. Costa Rica's only hope is if they win by like six goals and Brazil gets absolutely slapped up by Colombia, which in all honesty, I mean, there's a little bit of hope in both of those results happening, but it was looking very hard for them to do anything, especially since on paper, Paraguay is probably the better team. But Costa Rica came out hot. They were not messing around. They were standing on business. They managed to get two goals in the first 10 minutes absolutely shocking the Paraguayan team but after this honestly Costa Rica just took their foot completely off the pedal after their second goal it was entirely Paraguay's game Costa Rica barely even got a sniff in and at the 55th minute Paraguay found their consolation goal ultimately they didn't really end up doing anything else after this the game ended up 2-1 for Costa Rica meaning ultimately like I said this game didn't really matter too much a little bit of a formality but big props to Costa Rica for getting their first win against a non-CONCACAF team in a long long time Time, which now takes our attention to the other game of Group D. Colombia versus Brazil. You have this undefeated Colombian team going up against this Brazilian side that has been lacking so far overall, not only in this tournament, but also in recent years and in recent friendlies. And the winner of this game essentially was going to have a much easier route in the playoffs, finishing first place in this group, meaning you get Panama in the next round. Second place in the group gets you Uruguay. So there's honestly a good amount of stakes in this game since the winner really gets an easier path. So I was actually at this game 
game. I saw everything with my own two eyes. So I know firsthand what I'm talking about here, okay? I was there. I witnessed it. So the game was very intense to start off. Hamas had a free kick that hit the post. Players were playing with full intensity. And at just about the 12th minute, after winning a free kick, the spirit of Ronaldinho and Juninho took over to Rafinha and he scored a banger of a free kick. However, after Brazil scored the free kick, they didn't really offer too much. It was honestly mostly Colombia dictating the play of the game, moving the ball around. Every now and then, Brazil would get a counterattack, but they never really did much with it. Ultimately, Colombia would find their equalizer just before halftime. As a sequence of events after Allison gave away the ball, ultimately ended up in Munoz finding the ball in some space and just slotting it away. From here, it was mostly Brazil just trying to get back into the game. Colombia could afford to draw, so they were really taking their time, trying to pick apart this Brazilian team as best as possible, but not trying to force anything. Ultimately, the game would end up 1-1, which was very disappointing for Brazilian fans, but Colombia well deserved. At this point, they're about 26, 27 games unbeaten. They get to play Panama in the next round, whereas Brazil have to play against Uruguay. So with that being said, boys, the final standings in this table, in Colombia first, Brazil second, Costa Rica third, and Paraguay in fourth. A lot of work to do for this Brazilian side. Colombia, let's see how far they can get in this tournament. And just also real quick, shout out to all the Colombians because this stadium was packed out with Colombian fans. The atmosphere was crazy. Very fun game to go to. So there you boys have it. That is everything that happened in this Copa America group stage. Quarterfinals are about to kick off very, very soon. I'm going to give a real quick prediction right now. First up, Argentina, Ecuador. I'm going Argentina. Venezuela, Canada. I'm going Venezuela. Uruguay, Brazil. I'm going Uruguay. And then Colombia, Panama. I'm going Colombia. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Thank you both for watching. Peace.